Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Liviu Garcia. I'm a managing partner at um, BT Provider. Uh, welcome to our webinar series of um, where we discuss about data, data analytics, and why data is important uh, nowadays within uh, within organizations. Um, it's a series of four. This is the last uh, webinar before summer, and then we'll most probably meet again in September. Um, it's a webinar uh, track dedicated to um, uh, foreign uh, companies. Uh, that's why the webinar track is, is currently in English. And uh, before we go into the details uh, and the topics of this discussion, uh, I'd like to have a short introduction in terms of what we do and uh, what are the uh, economic areas that, um, that we address. Um, mainly, we are a data analytics company. There are a lot of uh, topics, words, and buzzwords around the data topics, starting from the business intelligence, the traditional BI, continuing with uh, more modern data visualization terminology, big data, guided analytics, data discovery, statistical analysis, rapid BI, modern BI. So there is a lot of uh, concepts, terminologies, and uh, definitions around the data topic. We cover most of them starting from uh, data acquisition, uh, data storage and processing, and data visualization with, uh, with Tableau software. Uh, and we also um, started the digitalization of all these processes um, using Salesforce uh, technology. Um, our guests for today, I will present them shortly. And uh, before going into the topics of the discussion that we have, Today, I'll ask them to, to introduce themselves in a more detailed way. Uh, Giuliano Gishi, it's a senior manager at the um, uh, Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy, um, uh, FIFA World Cup, Moxin uh, Zekri, managing director at Finland, and the usual suspects, Tudor Trof, uh, executive account, ex uh, um, enterprise account executive at Tableau Software. Christy Michalka, Enterprise Account Executive, Salesforce, and myself uh, from, uh, from BT Provider. Uh, before we go into the topics of uh, today's session, um, uh, just a very short uh, background context. According to a study done by Salesforce on their customers' uh, um, uh, portfolio, um, more than 64% of the companies two years ago were focusing on digital transformation journey. Probably uh, the figure is much higher these days considering the national and the international uh, context where all the interaction with the consumer, with the end customer should have um, as, as digital as possible footprint um, greater than a, than a direct contact. So uh, digital transformation of the processes, internal processes and mostly external processes towards the end consumer start, are starting to, to have a more important focus from the executives. Uh, looks like most of the reasons are speed and efficiency of tasks, uh, cost savings, uh, data transparency, uh, improved customer experience, uh, more ex uh, accessible education, and so on and so forth. So we live in a space, in a world that it's becoming more and more uh, digital, where the interaction between companies and customers, um, it's uh, in a more uh, digital and transformed way. Um, in, for a bank, for example, you don't need to go to their uh, uh, branches. You can start uh, a relationship with, uh, with a bank just from your home, from your computer. Um, and uh, <clears throat> that's becoming more and more uh, present. Um, having that said, uh, the main topics for today is digital transformation and uh, data analytics and how data analytics can support the digital transformation process. Uh, question number one, we have a series of uh, five questions and we'll be um, each one of them uh, presenting our own uh, opinion and discuss debate on, on these topics. 
question number one um how prepared are the companies uh for a new customer centric strategy for so many years the companies have been focusing on a product um centric strategy now they are moving towards a customer centric strategy trying to understand uh the um, requirements the, the what, what the customer desires um and, and they want to understand that at scale and how digitized and modern are the marketing sales and service processes of the companies um and uh, uh, their interaction with the final uh, customer and this is in the context that uh today um according to a study done by new vantage partners four out of five executives they fear the disruption from the highly agile data-driven uh, um, startups so how prepared are the companies of today for this new digital world customer centric versus product centric and i'd like to start with um, asking giuliano to take the first question and let us know what is your opinion and of course a short introduction thank you Livio. so first of all thank you very much for the opportunity to be here discussing uh data analytics i've been in the data analytics domain for over 20 years now so I'm kind of a dinosaur in this area and uh right now i work uh, with the transition or in the intersection between data analytics and project management so i've done both um in several different situations and uh, seen uh, this process of uh, you know becoming digital uh, growing more and more from a very static kind of environment where i used to work before i was for years in the telecoms industry which was kind of a pioneer in using data analytics uh, you know back in the day uh, now moving to to uh, this modern era where we have uh, access to data everywhere uh, so uh, in my opinion uh, the companies are getting uh, better but are not quite there. I think that people, uh, in, in a lot of cases, they are kind of uh, stuck in their own uh, old processes and old uh, infrastructure. Uh, and, and that requires, uh, you know, uh, understanding of the potential of uh, using data in a better way. So going beyond operational efficiency. So if you see the graph that you have shown for the, the surveys, you see in the, top, in the very top, they're trying to simplify the processes and save money. But you can do a lot more with data. So I think it's a natural evolution that they will uh, go there uh, and, uh, you know, start experience with this data, trying to extract more value from, from it uh, and uh, start moving uh, towards generating better uh, customer experience and even better products. Uh, so my personal opinion is that this is a process that's an ongoing process. Not all companies are reacting at the same speed. Some of them will fear because, uh, you know, the, the young ones coming, they, are, they build their processes and they, they build their infrastructure around data. And obviously they can uh, uh, enjoy from the benefits of, of uh, using this data. They, have, they are more open-minded, they're not stuck in, in to processes and, uh, and systems, uh, legacy systems, I would say. Uh, so it is a challenge and uh, companies that are uh, more open-minded and understand uh, technology strategic level not only uh, at the operational level will be uh, benefiting the most from this process thank you uh, giuliano uh, moxin zekri a short introduction and what is your view uh, coming from the finance i'll say sector of the economy thanks Livio. um I actually, so first let me introduce myself. So Masin Zekri, uh, I'm working at Finland. Uh, basically we're specializing um, in Swift related products and services. So we're helping financial institutions automate their processes and actually also analyze uh, their financial transactions. Um, not sure if you guys do hear me. Yeah, we can. Yeah? Okay, yeah. perfect. Uh, I think we have a little bit of an inter... Uh, the G digital era uh, and being more customer centric, but indeed the processes are really holding holding them back. So if I give you an example, so recently doing a, a project for 
quite a, a large actually banking group in uh, in Morocco, um, where they want to basically automate their payment processes, provide real time feedback to their customers, etc. Um, and talking to actually some to some high level executives within the bank, what you hear is, it's fine. We can actually give a kind of digital experience to the customer and start by doing everything manually in the back end side you know on our back office we can still have a team of uh, 50 people managing uh, all these uh, all these transactions manually so i think it's really a problem of of mindset that's still not there and again this is uh, purely based on uh, on uh, on let's say emerging markets with existing banks so it's a uh, it's for me it's a special combination so you have a uh, you have the, the banking mindset, which is quite uh, conservative, uh, and that doesn't really help. So indeed, uh, I think startups will get there uh, more quickly because they're more agile. It's easier for them to adapt to new processes. When you're talking to, the, to a bank, you're basically talking to, to a dinosaur of processes. You know, a lot of things still happen on paper before you actually authorize a payment transaction. The, the paper needs to be signed by four people in some banks, you know. So, so it's a bit too early to actually speak of uh, end-to-end -end digitalization. I think there's some some good will in uh, in that sense, but uh, we we still need a bit of time before uh, before this becomes a reality. Okay, super. Thank you, uh, thank you, Moxin. Um, now, Christy Salesforce is the um, I would say the company in the world that tells you what's the time when it comes to uh, what's the clock when it comes to, to digitalization? Uh, how do you see the things from your end? Well, uh, first of all, everybody understands something different when they, they say digital transformation, you know. And uh, Salesforce ran a study uh, with uh, our customers and we found out that 80% of them, they say that they are in a process of digital transformation, uh, but only 14% uh, say that this digital transformation process is uh, somehow successful. And only 3%, and this is the, the very impressive uh, part, is that only 3% consider that they, are, they succeed in doing the digital transformation. So they, they went all the way. Um, if we are talking about enterprise customers, medium and big customers, uh, especially, I think lots of companies are still, you know, focusing on departments, you know, departments that are not communicating between them, uh, at least at the data level. Uh, so even within the same company, the, even within the, do you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so even within the same company, there are different levels of digitalization and digital transformation. Uh, so this is because mainly because there is not a centralized and consolidated strategy for digital transformation. So during the time, those departments and those managers that were more open to, to innovation and to new things and to adapt and be more flexible, uh, they advanced more than the others. So there is a unbalance between the level of digital transformation even within the departments of, of a company. Uh, so from our experience with our customers uh, from Salesforce, a consolidated strategy for customer engagement uh, that will cover all areas of the, the interaction with the customer, like marketing, sales, customer service, analytics, uh, e-commerce where there is the case this is the winning solution so it, it doesn't necessarily mean to start big massive projects to to impact all organization because especially in enterprise uh, organization this is a big fear for them to start a huge project that will impact uh, all the organization you can it's important to build up a strategy and a roadmap on medium and long term and to stick to it so definitely it's in terms of customers being a customer centric company it's very important to have a consolidated view of the customer the, that uh, buzzword you know it's already the buzzword customer 360 view but it's very important 
and this would give you a consistent and consolidated engagement with the customer on the channel of communication they prefer at, at the moment they prefer to engage with with your brand or with your company and this this is one of the differences between a customer centric uh, approach and a product centric approach so just to <laughs> because i started with with the answer just to give two words about me uh, christian michalka I'm, I'm from salesforce covering enterprise customers in southeast europe and uh, yeah, so we've seen a lot of successful customers, uh, you know, going through the digital transformation process by creating a, a roadmap and a strategy on medium and long, ter long term and stick to, to it. Yeah. Okay, super. Thank you, Christine. Um, if you, can I say something? Because I, I just had an example yesterday of me trying to interact with a company and I think it's important in the discussion. Uh, yeah, sure, go ahead, please. So I was interacting with uh, an energy and gas company, and mm -hmm. you know that you have to move from one department to another, and then you always have to give your data, everything, like date of birth, email address, name, um, everything. And you know what? It means that exactly what, what Christy was saying, those departments, they don't communicate with each other. As, a, as an end customer in the 21st century, this, this bad experience that this big company is, is offering me, it means that I'm just waiting for one final invoice to come from their side to, to my side, and immediately I will switch. So not being digital and not having the, the, pro, the, the customer centric strategy already in place for me as a, as a consumer in the 21st century, it means that I would move already from them and they will lose me in very very quickly so i think companies should if they don't have already on the roadmap to have to have to go towards being a customer centric company and not not digitizing their entire uh, departments and being on the same platform so that they can see the customer from from the same angle regardless of if you look from marketing or from sales or from operations or from services this mean that probably in a few years time they will they won't exist as a company anymore or they will lose a lot of money so then in the end they will have to restructure so i think it's it's a it's already the time for them to to if they haven't thought about it to think about it and do it very very quickly especially in the global context of coronavirus and the economic crisis thank you okay um uh, great thank you for this example tudor now question number two it's more towards the uh, data. So what is the role of modern and data analytics in this opportunity of uh, accelerating the digitalization? Uh, as a little bit of context, data warehousing and BI, it's a concept that exists since the 90s, I think. Uh, but something has changed in the last five years or so. Uh, something has changed dramatically. Uh, this is in the cost in the context where uh, Forrester Research, uh, according to one of their studies, is saying that insights-driven organizations will grow six, seven times faster than the global GDP. So, what is the role of modern uh, data analytics in this opportunity, uh, Giuliano? What would be on on your take on this? Okay, uh, so my view, modern data and analytics is uh, kind of a, you know, part of the foundation of this whole transformation, right? It's a must, it needs to be there. I think that there's, a, uh, as, you know, we have we could perceived from the previous question, there's kind of, uh, there are many challenges uh, related to uh, going digital and also to understand the data and understand the even basic concepts. So data analytics will help you. Uh, from the beginning to answer uh, certain questions that need to be answered um, and uh, that you basically won't be able to answer without this kind of thing. So, so uh, I'll give you an example uh, for large organizations, uh, like from just picking up on Tudor's example. 
in, in some cases, you cannot be customer centric because you don't even have a clear understanding of what's a customer across the different departments and the different divisions of the organization, right? So data analytics will help you to align those, those concepts uh, and to basically streamline the whole process of, of going into a, a digital uh, path. Uh, so for me, it's fundamental. Uh, it's also fundamental that people uh, start to understand the, the, the power of uh, using data to run the, the, the daily business. This is very difficult in certain domains. So in my personal experience, it's, uh, it's quite difficult uh, to, to introduce this, this in project, traditional project management, so large scale project management, uh, works still in an, an old school way. So it's quite difficult to, to bring uh, uh, new uh, technologies and data analytics to the context. But once people perceive the value of what you're bringing to the table, then they start to understand and then they, they, uh, they become addicted to it and they understand that you cannot go forward without it. So for me, it's a major role uh, uh, that people start using this kind of tools uh, just by start, uh, starting using it and start promoting it, you start to streamline processes because it will require alignment, it will require mutual understanding discussions between uh, different uh, divisions and departments, uh, which is something you, you aim for uh, in the end of the day. Uh, so obviously, insights driven companies will grow faster because uh, if they are if they reach the point of being insights driven it's because they've done a lot of ho homework before uh, to get to that stage so uh, usually they will, they will have their process uh, working better their customer experience is better uh, their projects are running better uh, you know towards the same strategic objective uh, and and you know data analytics is fundamental for them Okay, um, thank you, Giuliano, on, on, on this. Um, Maxine, what do you view from your yeah, yeah. financing? So I, I will take it more on the on the side of the being customer centric. So I mean, today when, when you look at uh, at the, the banking sector, you have so many new entrants that you actually need to analyze your customer data if you want to remain uh, viable. Okay, so today the banks are already under, under a lot of pressure. Uh, with regards to the quality of services they offer, the customer experience, to, to come back to what Tudor was saying. Uh, if, if you need to wire money uh, internationally, more and more people actually turn to new entrants like TransferWise or Currency Fair instead of going to their bank. Uh, whereas this is actually a big chunk of the, the, the bank's uh, revenue, let's say. Um, and to, for a bank to remain uh, competitive and, and to have so to add value uh, in, in this sector, it needs to really understand uh, the data from its customers. Now, adding to that, you also get the competition from other banks in the sector. So the pie is getting smaller and smaller when it comes to the retail market, of course. Um, I'm not talking about the, the B2B, but for, for banks in the retail market, the pie is getting smaller due to these new entrants. Uh, whereas the amount of data from the customer get, is now gigantic comparing to, uh, to 10, 15 years ago. Uh, so if they want to remain um, attractive and have uh, a real added value to their customers, it's important that they can actually understand this data in a, in a more straightforward way, if I can say. Uh, and I think that's where modern data analytics uh, is. I think we have a little bit of an interruption from Moxin. Uh, but they're really trying to. Uh, of digitalizing the experience, you know. Um, so I think that's where uh, modern data analytics has a big role to play in uh, in this process. Okay, we we missed a few seconds from your speech, Moxin, but I think we can recompose uh, using natural uh, and artificial intelligence your your statement <laughs> due to the to the bandwidth. Uh, probably okay. we lost three or four sorry, seconds. Sorry yes. about that. No problem. But we we can recompose the entire idea of uh, of what you have mentioned. Um, cool. So thank you, thank you, Moxin, uh, on this. Uh, Tudor, 
you've been in this space since quite a few customers since forever <laughs> no i'm kidding um, um, what have you seen in, in this last i'd say five so seven years let's start with the basic we all know that the data uh, has increased exponentially in the last in the last few years and uh, the research says that in just two years meaning 2005 and 2006 we have produced more data and of course this data is digital than the entire human history before that in just two years so th the the truth is we have a lot of data okay that's amazing we also know from other studies and and researchers and even the economists were saying that that data is the new oil because of course it contains the information of everything and then if you know that then of course you would you would have a competitive advantage um and it's, it's clear that the data and analytics are speeding up this transformational uh, process and and digitalization but I, I don't think it's enough i think we we need to make sure and this is also tied to the first question we need to make sure that we are all looking at this data and everyone in the company because we are now talking about the, the digital transformation process within the company have access to this data so i would introduce also the concept of democrat democratizing data to everyone in the business and then i will also uh, add the context of analytics so we have a lot of data we are all looking at it uh, from from all the departments so then we have this 360 view of the customer but then we also need to just we also need to analyze it okay and that's why analytics is very very important because analytics will will not just uh, show us some things but they will give us trends and patterns and opportunities so then our business can flourish afterwards so um, this is how i would look into this into this question is we have a lot of data we need to give it to everyone in the business not just to see it but also to analyze it and then probably we would speed up the transformation uh, in the company and we will then have a correct digitalization and uh, process. Um, yeah, j just to capitalize on, on this, I think this is one of the things that uh, 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 really have changed in the past five years. So a crystallization of these layers, uh, I think until seven years ago, 90 plus percent of the whole world was in the reporting era. And only a one digit part of this world was doing um, analytics, classic traditional reporting existing since 90s. So nothing has changed for 20 years here. But I think in the past five years, two, these two additional layers have uh, crystallized in the, in the space. Uh, Self-service BI where you come and get your own information and build your own visualization based on pre-published curated data sources. And a third layer, which is data exploration, where you don't really have a dashboard in mind, but you have a business question that you need to answer. That's what data exploration here uh, it is. And I think that um, the great potential business is here in the second and third layers. And we see more and more companies uh, joining the second and the third layer. We, as a, as a data analytics company, we work with um, uh, companies from the same domain, and we see that those are having a data analytic mindset, and they ask themselves different kinds of questions about their business, and they want to answer everything on the spot. They have a better position in the, um, in the market than opposed to their uh, uh, competition. <clears throat> Why? Because they look at the data, they do a clustering of their customers, they find out which uh, have a, a great potential to uh, scale up the business. Uh, they connect marketing and sales, they reanalyze the things on the spot two or three months from now on. Everything is dynamic, so they do this on the spot <clears throat> with data and just a data exploration tool. Um, with them uh, and so this is one of the things that we we've seen uh, that ha has been changed in the in the past years and the second uh, uh, major thing that happened is related to business and non-technical users having the understanding of the business 
uh, being connected to the data. So seven years ago, it was the traditional business user, ITBI, business requirements, uh, translation of business requirements into specifications, building a reporting, coming back, a two or three week cycle, which was killing the, um, I would say the energy and the emotion of finding business answers. Now we work with marketing users, we, are, we work with sales users, we, we work with CFOs, we work with um, um, operations manager directly from the, um, from the production line that are analyzing their own data. Why? Because the technology has changed and became more and uh, less and less IT, an IT tool, it, be, it becomes a business tool and empowers all these business users in order to consume and explore their data. So this is another uh, thing that we have seen, uh, it changed in the past years, and which is putting in, in, into the hands of the business uh, a great um, exploration um, uh, method. Um, <clears throat> good, so I think we, we can go to question number three. Uh, related to the obstacles uh, that um, are in this data digitalization process. Um, if, if you look at the all the marketing studies in the news, everything looks so shiny, data projects are nice. Uh, um, we live in a data world, uh, everybody's doing data and big data and looks like everything is so successful. 98% um, of the executives uh, in, in, that participated into the new Vantage Partners confirmed that uh, they aspire to a data-driven culture, but only 32% are reporting success. So one out of three executives are uh, reaching to, to success. So the fundamental question here is what is the obstacle for the two out of three not reaching to the to, to where they want to to be so what are the obstacles in this uh, data project Giuliano okay so I'm gonna focus the answer on, uh, on data analytics and uh, just uh, continuing what you have described uh, I think one of the one of the challenges uh, to start with uh, you mentioned curated data sources and this is a very important point because uh, you know uh, uh, I also believe that's very important to, to have uh, distributed analytics and self-service uh, uh, capabilities to the end user so that they can explore data. So, they, But they need to start from, uh, from um, a trusted source uh, so that the, this data could be properly uh, consumed. And that, that, that's a major challenge in itself. So data architecture behind uh, the analytics structure needs to be very robust uh, so that First, that people will, will trust that, that source of data so that they can start doing analysis. And secondly, you can ensure that the, you know, the analysis will be correct. Right? Uh, the process of, uh, of going through to, uh, this uh, knowledge and uh, gathering knowledge on analytics uh, requires some exploration of the data, requires some tentative and error. So um, sometimes uh, I think that uh, when you see this rate of success of these projects uh, and being working on a project domain for a long time, uh, you can uh, see that uh, there's another challenge on uh, challenge on aligning on the expectations of uh, an investment like that on data analytics. Sometimes the expectation is too high. The infrastructure behind it or the, the foundations behind it uh, are very low. Uh, so there is a kind of discrepancy between the, the two sides. So how do you measure the success and how do you break down those projects so that they can be more successful? I think it's a, it's a challenge in itself. Uh, so uh, perhaps thinking about smaller uh, steps, smaller increments uh, with more tangible results that you can measure would, would be uh, an approach. Uh, so that, that's something we experience all the time. If we try to pass a very uh, large project, uh, you know, it's always much more complicated than going two small steps so uh, in my personal experience uh, i've been leaving this uh, distribute, uh, distributed bi environment for a while so we have a few uh, different departments starting to rely on, on our data and using it uh, consistently to do their own analysis and uh, you know we don't get involved 
obviously we have a, a relationship with them, but we keep them free to do their own analysis, have their own insights, and they come and discuss with us and have new ideas. So I think this is positive for the organization, but you need to build a trust relationship between, uh, you know, a kind of centralized data architecture uh, team or uh, department and the other departments that will consume this information. Uh, so uh, that's basically, you know, one part of the, the challenges that I, that I could highlight. Okay, uh, thank you for your point of view, um, Maxim. What is your take on question on item number? Uh, yeah. So uh, I think you have you have different obstacles. If I were to to name like the the two or three main important ones, according to me, the the first one would be get, getting back to what Julian was saying is the the quality of the data, uh, making sure you have as less noise as possible in the data sources you get, because otherwise indeed it becomes just a hassle to to be able to go through that. Um, and, and in order to do that, you, you need to have the, the right systems in place. And what I see today in, in financial institutions is that a lot of time we're still working with legacy systems and there is no, um, no real drive to actually go towards a fully digitalized solution. And we rely on pretty old system. Uh, making this data consumption more difficult. I mean, extraction from, from the, the source system more, more complicated. And so w once you, you cross those two bridges, you, you face, according to me, the third one, which is uh, actually making sure the, the, the mindset and the culture within the company uh, entices the users to actually use the data they have available to them. And I, I still see that many times, like banks investing uh, quite, uh, quite some efforts uh, into deploying analytics uh, solutions uh, to finally have only a, a small portion of the user base actually making use of the data. Now, why don't the others do it? Uh, as I said, it, it's a mindset. Sometimes it's a kind of knowledge or ability to, uh, to be able to use the tool properly. Um, and sometimes it's purely down to communication within the different departments. Like uh, I talked to some business students and me, oh, right. I actually didn't know we have this solution. We have access to such data, you know, whereas this is just sitting within the institution for quite some time already. So, uh, so I think it's a mix of everything. Definitely people and processes are involved, but I think the, the legacy technologies that we still find in some institutions, uh, is definitely an obstacle to uh, to actually a, a real digitalized process. Okay, um, Tudor. So I think Musin touched point on on all these three things. So it's about I think people, technology, and processes. In terms of people, what I see from my experience working with a lot of customers across Central and Eastern Europe is they either don't know exactly as Musin said they don't even know that they have we have invented technology that can that doesn't require to write code or sql it's just easy with drag and drop and of course they don't know therefore they won't they won't have access to it and they will still use their legacy systems it's also about the drive and the desire to innovate a lot of people in it's, it's not just top management but it's also people you know heads of departments directors they're very comfortable with the status quo and they don't have this you know natural desire to change things to improve to grow they're just happy with with what it is and i think I, that's a really really big chunk of of the problem when i compare what's happening in the uk or what's happening in the us compared to you know the eastern europe let's say for instance uh, we don't have this drive and in our DNA as, as individuals. And then there's also the fear of change, which we all know that is a really, really big part of things. We don't want to change because change will require us to invest a lot of time. In terms of, uh, in terms of processes, um, you know, you're, just, you're not just deploying technology, you are, you are, you are creating an entire set of processes you're you're doing a transformational change that will require a lot of work and you will have a lot of people and there's also this resistance to change and sometimes you know it's just people that do not want to do it and it's it's hard unless you really go and talk to them about the cost of of opportunity okay so here is the opportunity in front of you here are the things that you need to do 
um, uh, let's build a, a trusting relationship and let's let's do it. So yeah, these are these are the obstacles that I see in my projects. Um, yeah, I would add one more thing, uh, Tudor. I agree to to the items that you have mentioned. Uh, there is one more thing that I'd like to add. It's related to the energy, the belief, and the mindset. We've seen organization where um, a finance analyst uh, changed the mindset of an entire organization and the mindset of the CEO. Uh, we've seen that as part of our um, customers' portfolio. And we, we also have seen CEOs that did not uh manage to convince and um, to convince an entire organization to change the mindset and the other way around um, the idea in, in all these cases is that regardless the role regardless the position regardless the title you have in the organization as long as you believe in, in that idea and you fight for it and you um, assume it with success and, and failure, you have a higher uh, chance for success uh, in, in building a data culture and building a data analytics mindset of the organization. <clears throat> that's, uh, that's what we have seen in most of the successful cases. With, there was a person that, uh, or several, but in most of the cases that was one champion, how we, we like to call it that believed in that idea and um, really made the entire organization to succeed. It's difficult before the journey to assume it. After that, it's, it's much easier to say, yeah, we did it. But um, yeah, you really have to, to have that leadership uh, attitude uh, when it comes to such a project. Uh, good, <clears throat> so we're moving towards to um, uh, item number four. Um, what does it mean to be a data-driven company? Um, I think about obstacle advantages we have discussed so far. Uh, according to, to McKinsey and company, 8%, uh, so one digit percent, 8% percent of the companies are achieving analytics at scale. And this is a worldwide um, survey. 8% of the companies are achieving analytics at scale. I would say that 90 plus uh, organizations in this world, they have reporting, they have data, they have some sort of a data consumption mechanism. So it's not like they are far away from the topic. They have something, but 8% are achieving analytics at scale. In our uh, definition, analytic at scale means that decisions at different, almost every level are taken uh, based on data and based on discussions with data. Uh, there are, as we speak, companies in the world where each and every employee has access to a data visualization tool that is explore and access to, to the data sources around their job. Uh, and they can analyze, interpret, uh, reinvent the company at, uh, at their level. So this is our definition of analytics at scale to build this culture to each and every uh, level of management and, uh, and department. And looks like we are far away from there because only 8% are achieving this goal. So uh, what does it mean to each one of you to, to be a data-driven company? Uh, Giuliano? Okay, so that's, that's a Difficult question, but there is a kind of a uh, one simple answer to me, which is uh, basically take the technology and the data as, as a strategic asset. Okay, so you cannot be a data-driven company if your CTO does not sit in the same table as the CFO, for example. You see a lot of uh, of this happening everywhere. Right, so. Uh, that mindset of investing in technology and investing in data, like investing in utilities. So it's like installing electricity in your building. You spend the money and then you never worry about it. So that that, sh that cannot uh, be in the same uh, definition as a data-driven company, right? So technology will evolve. It's a an, it's an never-ending journey to, to explore this. And this to be needs to be understood across the board for a company to be really data-driven. 
So you mentioned some projects that were, so some initiatives or so departmental initiatives, which are really fantastic, and they don't come to fruition to the whole organization simply because organizations not ready to onboard these new things and not ready to deploy this in a strategic level. So no matter how successful you are, uh, in, in, you know, uh, on a lower level, if there is no mindset and no understanding of treating this uh, strategically uh, and and seriously uh, across the whole uh, operation of the company, then uh, it will be very difficult to be a data-driven company, or you know, almost impossible. And uh, the moment you start uh, making data more democratic and making processes better, uh, the, the hierarchy of the organization is also going to change. So uh, that's kind of a a conflict in itself because you know some people are just stuck to the organization so much that, that maybe even if this is better for the company they will not pursue this, this kind of uh, initiatives so uh, basically you know it, it boils down to the to the, to the concept of uh, treating this uh, seriously and strategically you know and understanding how this could could impact your your own company so uh, and that's uh, it's very rare despite the, the many efforts that you have on uh, departmental projects and uh, initiatives, they are successful in their own domains, no question about it. Uh, but uh, to have a real data-driven company, uh, they're rare still. Um, yeah, in, indeed, and we are also experiencing, experiencing them on, on the market. We, we've seen organizations that managed to be there. Uh, we've seen organizations that are on their own way to, to reach there but indeed it's it's still an eight percent of the companies achieving that that goal um cool so thank you thank you juliano for your input moxin yes. what is your take on on this uh yeah so if if you look at a real data-driven company for me we we should not have to say that it's a data-driven company it should be in the dna of everyone working within the company to just use data you know it's not like i'm doing something special and i'm actually playing with that visualization exploring this kind of every employee um, and that's only one part of it you know because this is like using the data but what i've seen in in previous companies i was working with was also the employees wanted to have access to data but were not willing to put in the effort to actually provide the data needed to to feed the platform, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and I think this is this is the balance that you need to have if you want to to be a real data driven company. It's not really looking at what you can get out of it, but also being ready to to do what it takes to actually feed the information, you know. And I think that's one place where we uh, there is still a lot of policing done within entities to make sure that data is available. And as long as we have this kind of mindset where you need to police people to actually provide information, I don't think that you can say that you're a real data-driven company. You know, that that should come from, yeah, uh, as a kind of goodwill or or, or reflex, if I can say. Mm -hmm. Tudor, what do you what do you think? So, being a data-driven company it means exactly as everyone has said to empower people in the business, and when I mean people, I mean everyone in the business or the large majority, to have access to data, because that is, of course, one problem with big companies that they don't give access to all the people to data, and to let those people do um, analytics, okay, see the data and then do analytics with it, so then they can improve their own tiny, you know, processes and business and make decisions related to data. If I look at the largest companies in the world and the most successful ones, and I also look at their GDP and how much money they make every year, and I also look at our Tableau deployments, I can see that those companies, and I think I can name a few because there are, there are public use cases like Amazon or like Netflix, uh, and I think Honeywell, because I, I can name these ones because they have we have public use cases with them. These companies have empowered with Tableau, so with the right technology, the right software. And of course, they fed that technology exactly as, as uh, the predecessor said, with, with the right data, everyone. So they have deployments of hundreds of thousands of users of Tableau. 
everyone in the business, whether you are doing service, whether you are doing marketing, whether you are doing HR, whether you are doing finance, they have access to this right technology, which is in, in their case, Tableau, and they feed them with the data. And to be honest, it's not easy. Most of these big companies, they might have on an average about 900 different data sources. Can you imagine 900 data sources? And then you need to make sure that you provide with the right data to each department. So then uh, via Tableau, they, you empower them to make decisions based on data. It's not easy, but then again, look at the money and the turn turnover that these companies are, are making, and it's unbelievable. So uh, I know that in the past, you know, we've had legacy systems and they were very, really, really heavy and relying on IT. Uh, because business people don't know how to code. You need special education for that. And I know it was, um, we have this fear of we need to provide the right data. But my, my, my experience from what I have been working in the last five years with pretty much all the biggest companies in the world is that uh, you need to take a leap of faith. You need to start from somewhere. And then, you know, you just improve things along the way. You can't have the perfect technology, uh, perfect curated data uh, from day one. It's a it's a process that it, it optimizes, and that's why the only eight percent of people are achieving analytics at scale right now, because they want everything from day one, which is of course not 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 achievable at large scale. It's a process that usually takes three five years, to be honest. Okay, right, but three five five years. The idea is to start from somewhere and uh, start the three to five years journey. I think that's one of the key success factors and be consistent in the activities that you have. Have a plan, start executing it. Don't expect to do something in six months. Uh, scatter down the, the, the activities across the next years and uh, start the journey. I think this is one of the things that the organization can do in order to improve this 8% uh that we we see here on the screen and to be honest olivia i would also add here to have the right uh, partner you know next to you because um you need to do a lot of education even on those bi and it departments and because uh, they are they are trained in legacy systems they don't know what self-service bi is and having the right partner like you to guide the company and work with, with the company and with, with key people in the company, I think this is also a crucial part of, of transforming those companies and help them you know, in their journey towards being a data-driven company, which again, it's, it doesn't happen from day one. When you buy Tableau, that's it, it's done. You have to you know, create a plan and work three, five years to, to go there. Yeah, and, and work with their mindset, understand how their mind is working, how analytical is, is their mind, because we've seen a, a large population of users, we empower them with very powerful data exploration tools, easy to be used, and a big ratio of all these users are trying to find out ways back to the Excel. And we are trying to see what, why are they doing that? and bring them back to the visual analytics, which is much, much easier and much simpler to be used. Then we, uh, as long as we understand what is behind their analytical mindset, we act on that thing, we bring them back. Of course, some of them are going back to the Excel, bring them back, and, um, and that's the way, the way to go. It's a matter of education as well, and uh, not only from technology perspective, but also from the analytical mindset. How do you start asking questions yourself as a sales representative, as a marketing, as a, I don't know, service and so on and so forth? Yeah, but you know, Livio, this is, I think, a natural process. You can't expect everyone having an analytical mind uh, across all the organizations everywhere. Uh, and it's also the the winning factor, I would say, right now, because I was telling you earlier about me, and uh, you know, I won't have that company serving me on, uh, after they will just invoice me the last bill. I will just switch immediately. Uh, it's also the 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 difference between winner winner companies and losing companies, to be honest. And look at Tesla. I I would just I had just have this example out of my out of my head now. 
they are now the most valuable uh, car manufacturer in the world. And it started with the with the guy that wanted to change and revolutionize everything. And 10 years ago, when we were talking about uh, cars that will drive themselves and they will be electric, we were, okay, probably some of us, yeah, I think it will happen in 100 years. Yeah, this guy is crazy. Uh, I think he will fail, but look at it. I, uh, we are already there. So yeah. Yeah, and there's a lot of companies saying that uh, what is initially at the beginning, what is Tesla, Tesla doing? It's just doing some batteries on, on the wheels, on some wheels. That's uh, that's what we don't call a car, batteries on, on the wheels. But now they are one of the largest manufacturers. Yeah, I think this is the difference between the companies that uh, are having the mindset of doing average and be on the market and the companies that want to innovate. Uh, good. We have one more minute and one question. Uh, I think the statistics are not helping us to finish on time. Um, nevertheless, start the journey. Uh, question number five. Uh, I think we more or less answered this question. What are the elements that we need in an organization to have a healthy uh, data-driven culture? Um, New Vantage Partners is seeing that the technology is not the uh, uh, barrier that is uh, blocking the, the these initiatives. Um, it's the people and the change. So, as a conclusion of the today's session, and um, as the elements for success or for not having success, uh, what would be your take on this, uh, Giuliano? I agree with the statement, and uh, it goes with uh, my, my last response uh, in line with that. I think that, uh, you know, it's more about people than technology for sure. Uh, you know, it's just like going to the gym. You have all the technology you need there. It's all about the people if you'd like to have a change. It's the same the same thing here. So you need to treat that seriously and strategically. You know, that, that needs to be embedded in, in, the, in the mindset of the organization, right, from top to bottom. And uh, what else is needed is, is just transparency and freedom for people to use the data, good structures for them. So yes, technology plays a good, a big role. You cannot do it without it. Uh, uh, so you just need to, to give them the right tools and uh, acknowledge uh, that and have the buy-in from, from the whole organization. Do this as a, as a side project, uh, you will not be uh, achieving much. Uh, so that's basically it. Yeah. Uh, cool. Agreed. Thank you, Giuliano. Uh, Moxin, what do you think on the pros and cons things that are helping? I, mean, I, I agree with, Gi uh, with uh, Giuliano. So definitely technology is needed, but I think we're there already today. When you look at what's available, technology is not really the blocking factor to uh, to to have access to data, you know? It's really on the people and reluctance to change. Now, the change side really depends on, on the, um, let's say, the, the, the domain in which you are. If, uh, if I go back to banking, in my case, I mean, reluctance to change is, uh, is very, very strong, you know, very, very conservative for the right reasons sometimes, you know? So dealing with uh, with very sensitive data they need to be very careful but some sometimes they push it a bit too far you know yeah. um and then when you they look at people the reason to stay yeah. where they are yeah indeed so. indeed uh, and then we, when you look at people i think juliano pointed a, a very important thing you you need to have a buy-in from top to bottom and uh, i had a discussion actually it was it was this week so uh, it, it was on monday with a customer uh, deploying a solution where they can analyze data um and the CIO comes to us during the, the conversation and says, yes, but look, it's very important that we can actually extract everything we see to Excel so that you can play with it a bit more. You know, and if you're having this kind of man mindset at the highest level within the company, I, I see it like mission impossible to actually try and, uh, and have this, uh, this data-driven culture uh, more broadly within the entity, you know. It has to start, you need to have buy-in from, from the senior management uh, before you can actually try to hope to, to get into a, a real data-driven culture. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the same thing. Uh, I, I also always like to do this analogy. Uh, we have now very good tools to explore 
data and visualize, but we go back to the traditional Excel. It's like with the mouse. Mouse, uh, the little mouse that we, we have we use for the computer, uh, in, in, if you look at it from a conceptual perspective, it's more difficult to use a mouse rather than pointing directly on the screen uh, and tapping on the tablet. But we started to use mouse because that was the technology available 25 or 30 years ago. We didn't have tablets and, and uh, we couldn't tap on the screen. And now we're we are so used to the mouse, then it's mm -hmm. not so easy for everyone to move into a non-mouse life. So it's, uh, I think it's pretty much the same, uh, the same here. Um, Todor, a few last words in, in this session. Yes, very quickly. So I think to have a healthy data-driven culture is, is, is a combination of having the right vision, having the right strategy, having the right people that are actually part of the project and using the right technology, having the right processes and having the right partner to help you. Because I've seen companies that have the right strategy, have the right vision, if the CEO understands or the CIO understands, unfortunately, they don't, they don't have the right processes and everything crumbles down because of they don't have the right processes so it's a balance of all these things aligned together and done right in order to give you a healthy data-driven culture yeah and additionally to that i would uh, add um, that looking things uh, from a new and modern way as opposed to the traditional way sometimes uh, helps because many organizations are starting the journey uh, of implementing a data analytics culture and um, mentality, but uh, they are still doing it in the traditional and uh, old school way of doing things. So a modern way of approaching, which is more uh, agile, more, um, uh, let's say, in, in, with short term and medium and, and long term achievements, I think it's a more successful one. Uh, good, I, I think, good. I, I think we, we are done for today. Um, thank you everyone for uh, joining uh, this session. Uh, thank you for all the uh, attendees and all the speakers. Uh, we can conclude the session and uh, most probably we'll start having a new series of events uh, in the autumn. Until now, uh, until, until that time, enjoy your uh, holidays or uh, summer holidays, vacations. And um, see you soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Have a good day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.